In this video, we'll take a look at two of Heathkit's digital frequency counters, the IM2410 and IM2420. There's a common requirement in electronics to want to measure frequency. It can be done in a number of ways. In the early days of electronics, an absorption wave meter or grid dip oscillator were often used. An oscilloscope is another method. By the late 1960s, integrated circuits and digital electronics made it possible to build a digital frequency counter that could accurately measure frequency and display it with a digital readout. Both the IM2410 and IM2420 are examples of digital frequency counters that were offered in kit form by the Heathkit company in the 1980s. IM2410 represented Heathkit's low-end digital frequency counter and was sold from 1980 through 1992. It was only sold as a kit. I've seen it listed as having a retail price of $119.95. My 1982 Canadian Heathkit catalog listed at a price of $249.95 in Canadian dollars. It can measure frequency up to 225 megahertz. There's a single input using a BNC connector. A switch selects between 10 Hz to 50 MHz and 20 MHz to 225 MHz frequency ranges. Another switch selects between 0.1 second and 1 second gate times. Input impedance is 1 megohm. Stability is rated at plus or minus 10 parts per million and sensitivity is 25 millivolts. The display shows 8 significant figures on red 7 segment LEDs. The decimal point moves automatically to indicate frequency in megahertz. It has a metal case with rubber feet and a tilt-up stand. It runs on AC power only. There's an adjustment on the back to adjust the frequency of the internal oscillator. Looking inside, most circuitry is on a single large printed circuit board with a second smaller PCB for the display. It's all solid state using mostly 7400 series integrated circuits. The internal clock oscillator uses a 3.579545 TV color burst crystal. It's all discrete logic. No microprocessor is used. I bought my unit on eBay in 2009. I needed a frequency counter for aligning tube radios and wanted to get a Heath kit as they're reliable and easy to repair. I remember building an earlier model of one of these in high school for my electronics class around 1979. This unit goes up to 225 MHz, which is more than adequate for just about any radio work I do. It worked when received, and all I did was calibrate it against a signal generator that was calibrated against the WWV frequency standard station. I keep it on my bench and use it regularly. The IM2420 was a higher end counter with more features. It was sold as a kit and was offered from 1980 through 1990. My 1982 Canadian catalog lists it at 449.95. It can measure frequency up to 512 megahertz. It can also measure period, which is useful for very low frequencies. It has two inputs. Input A can measure from 5 hertz to 50 megahertz and has a 1 megohm input impedance. Input B measures 40 to 512 megahertz and is a 50 ohm input. Stability is 0.2 parts per million and is achieved by using a temperature controlled crystal oven. When turned off it's in standby mode where the oven is kept warm to avoid the need for it to warm up which can take up to 20 minutes. Guaranteed sensitivity is 25 millivolts and listed as typically 4 to 15 millivolts. You can measure the period of channel A, frequency of channel A, frequency of channel B, or the ratio of the frequencies between channels A and B. The mode control selects one of these four modes. A range switch selects one of four ranges for gate times to make the measurement. A trigger control allows adjusting the level at which measurements are triggered. It has a preset mode when turned fully clockwise. The display shows eight significant digits on red seven segment LEDs. It has a metal case with rubber feet and a tilt up stand. It runs on AC power only. On the rear panel is a connector that is an input for an external clock source or output of the internal 10 MHz clock as selected by a switch. Let me show it operating in each of the four modes. In period mode, with channel A connected to a 1 kHz signal, 
we can see the period display as about 1,000 microseconds. I now have it connected to two signal generators, each one going to one of the inputs. Switching to frequency A and setting the generator to 1 megahertz, we can see a reading very close to that value. On channel B, we measure about 30 megahertz. In ratio mode, we can see the ratio of channel A to B, in this case approximately 30. Looking inside, you can see it's constructed on a large printed circuit board. It's all solid state using mostly 7400 series integrated circuits. This is the crystal oven, which is inside a styrofoam insulated housing. The oscillator runs at 10 megahertz. I bought this unit from a local ham radio operator as part of a lot of Heathkit equipment. When received, it was working fine. I generally use it when I need to make accurate or high frequency measurements beyond what the IM2410 can do. Both units could be used with an optional telescoping antenna to make readings from a transmitter, for example. While both units provide basic frequency measurements, the IM2420 was over twice the price of the IM2410. For the higher price, you got a maximum frequency of 512 MHz versus 225 MHz for the 2410. You also got a more stable instrument due to the temperature controlled crystal oven. And it has two inputs with the ability to measure frequency ratio between them. To be honest, I don't know if this feature is particularly useful. I don't have original manuals for either unit, but partial manuals or schematics are available on the internet and full manuals can be purchased from a number of suppliers. Compared to older equipment like grid dip meters, digital frequency counters were much more accurate and easier to use. Both of these units offered a good value at the time, in part because of the cost savings of offering them in kit form. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit amateur radio and test equipment.